as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get started on the speeches. So, first of all, we'd like to um, announce the bride's mother and her sister. So, a big, warm round of applause, please, for Kathleen Taylor. <laughs> Just welcome everyone and thank you so much for coming to make Sherwin and Laura's day such a memorable one. It's been a smashing day. Just like to say a little bit about Laura. Today Laura did something which she doesn't usually do. She walked down the aisle. <laughs> Those who know Laura know that everything she does, she rushes. She lives life in the fast lane, always has deadlines to meet, always going from A to B at speed, manages to get there somehow, and I'm told manages to get things done without being late. Well, that wasn't always the case. <laughs> I was told to expect Laura on the 25th of May. Laura didn't arrive until the 15th of June. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly three weeks late. Now the nurse who was in attendance with me was as glad as I was that she arrived. <laughs> and she said, you know, 15th of June is a day designated to the year to the day of the child, special day to be born. Those children who are born today, for the next six weeks, they get free baby products. <laughs> <laughs> What's the case? Well, Laura nearly didn't survive to get her worth of six weeks free baby products, because when we arrived home, Jill was there as a two-year-old, <laughs> She watched as friends and neighbours come in and put silver at the side of the baby's head. It's a little present. Now she couldn't find any silver in our house, but she did find a toolbox. <laughs> and in that toolbox there was plenty of silver shiny nails. <laughs> and the next time I saw Laura as a three or four week year old baby, she, her head was surrounded by large silver nails. <laughs> well, she did survive. And those who remember the young Laura will probably say things like, oh, she was pretty, she was sweet, she was gentle, wasn't really given to tantrums. But those who knew her very well and watched her play with her friends on her skates, her bike, at her dancing, or at her horse riding, saw the competitive streak in Laura. She was determined that if anybody could do a maneuver, whatever it was, she would keep going until she could do it too, or maybe even better. But she wasn't really a willful child, but she had ways of doing things that was difficult to change. Laura didn't like sweets or chocolate as a child, but she loved pullamins. So that's what she had. She didn't like desserts or ice cream, but loved strong cheese, especially Stilton. So that's what she ate. She didn't really like me reading her stories, but loved to listen to those stories on an audio tape. And Laura and her Fisher Price cassette were seldom parted. She hated going swimming in the children's pool. So the little area where you wash your feet was her private swimming pool for a long time, and she wouldn't shift. But the one thing that Laura really did love was her trips to Ireland every year. She came to visit my family and to stay with her granny and granddad. 
And it was during these visits that Laura's love of shopping for a bargain was also <laughs> Most days, her and her granny went to the middle, the center of, of Newry where we lived, and they never got much further than a shop that wasn't renowned for quality, but quantity was there, and you got a lot of things very cheap, and Laura loved that. With the help of her granny, every year she piled my case with cheap pencil cases, cheap coloring books, cheap pens, cheap pencils, and we returned to England and flooded the house every year with all these cheap things. And to this day, Laura loves shopping for a bargain. And in fact, I believe that her and Sherwin can now be seen pushing the trolley around Lidl's. <laughs> well, talking about Sherwin. I felt I knew a lot about Sherwin before I actually met him, because Laura did a lot of talking about him. And I thought, well, I hope I do like this person, because she certainly likes him. Sherwin first came to meet us, I think it was my birthday, and he arrived with an enormous bunch of flowers and a large box of chocolates. You have to like a man like that. <laughs> and I did like him. And now two years down the line, he's a very welcome, as his family are, of course, extension to our family. Mind you, of late, I've noticed that anything that Sherwin doesn't like in his house, but doesn't know what to do with it. He arrives round to my house and presents it to me as if it's a present. <laughs> so I might change my mind about Sherwin. Jill's going to talk a little bit more. I'd like to echo Mum's words and say how delighted we are to see everyone here and to be sharing this really special day of Laura's and Sherwin's. And then I'd like to say to, Lord, to Sherwin and all of his family, which I'm really, really hoping we're delighted to welcome you all to our family. That's it. Um, and then I'd just like to say a few words on my own about Laura. So the first thing I'd like to tell you about Laura is she really is the most incredible sister. Throughout all of our lives growing up together, she's just been there for me, whatever's happened, and no matter what happens in life, I always know that I can just turn to Laura and she'll be there to support me and she'll make everything better. She has been just the incredible friend to me. And I'm really grateful to you for that. Thank you, Laura. But it hasn't always been exactly that way, has it? <laughs> Um, no, that's not true, but when we were, <laughs> when we were children, um, Laura was always the perfect, the angelic looking little girl that everyone said, oh, she's a joy to look after and she's so well behaved. And I was often the naughtier one that would get into trouble from time to time. And that would be something that Laura would often try um, to use for her best advantage. So <laughs> there, was, um, there was one time when we were both children, I think it must have been the early 80s, and mum had just got this new um, slow cooker, which is her prize possession and it was sitting in quite a place in the kitchen and Laura sneaked in there with a black felt pen and drew pictures all the way over it and so mum's pride of joy just covered in black felt pen and mum came in and looked at it in horror, looked at me, grabbed a hairbrush and chased me around the house. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, it wasn't me and Laura just <laughs> looked on like nothing had happened. <laughs> no, that doesn't happen now. Um, but, I think that just um, illustrates the fact that um, ever since we were children, um, myself and mum and anyone who knows Laura well knows never to underestimate her because she truly is, despite in, beneath the sweet and the kind exterior, she really is the kind, the strongest and the most determined person that you're ever going to meet. I think that um, one of the best illustrations of the way that she ought to always strive to be her best is um, when she had Kira, when Kira was born. 
Laura was determined that she was going to be the best mum that she could be and to throw herself into motherhood. But she was also determined that she was going to carry on with her studies and she was going to go straight through to university. Um, and she did, and she carried on. She got her degree and she got a first, and we were all incredibly proud of her for that. Um, but we also incredibly proud of the fact that Kira is now grown up into being this lovely young woman that we are so proud of ourselves. And I know that you'd agree that that's no small effort um, down to the efforts of your mum. And it was after Laura finished university that um, we decided oh, we'll buy a house together. And it'd be a good idea if we get a house that needs a little bit of work doing to it and a bit of a project. And because Laura is the most determined person that she is, we decided to buy a house. It wasn't just a little, needed a little bit of work. It was a house that actually needed a lot of work. And we spent the next six months of our lives covered head to toe in dust, um, doing things like ripping out kitchens and bathrooms ourselves and doing a whole world of things that I'd have never have dreamt of doing if it hadn't been for Laura's encouragement and her determination that we could do it. And we did, it was the best thing that we could have done. And you know, I'm really grateful to you to always be there um, to encourage me and to being the best that I can be. Um, and I know that Laura's head teacher, Usha, and all of the teachers at Woolwick will recognize these qualities that I'm talking about in Laura. Actually, before um, we went on our hen, Usha sent me such a lovely message and said that Laura had been officially recognized as a, you know, as a gifted teacher and she was incredibly proud of her being her outstanding, outstanding deputy head. I just thought it was such a lovely message and I think everybody recognizes those qualities in you, Laura. <laughs> Finally, I'd just like to end by saying that throughout all of our years growing up and all the brilliant times that we've had together and all of the fun that we've had, and there's been lots, I genuinely, hand on heart, can say that the happiest that I've seen Laura is when she's met Sherwin. I think we, we knew that Laura was really keen on Sherwin when she met him because she didn't talk about anything else ever at all. <laughs> and then the first time that I met Sherwin, I could see that they had something special because they just radiated happiness. And I think everybody in the room today can just look at them and see exactly what I mean because they, they really are just the happiest and loveliest couple. So everyone, please join me in wishing Laura and Sharon every, every blessing for their marriage and we hope that their love and happiness will carry on for the rest of their wonderful lives together. Laura and Sherwin. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd now like to pass over to Sherwin and a big huge round of applause, please, for Jarna. <laughs> you start, sorry, I speak Persian first. If you want translate a little bit English. <laughs> but as a little speech for me, just as short as possible, only to just start dancing and enjoying the rest of the evening. As a mother, tonight is my best time of my life. That's everybody's dream to see a, such a lovely day. My baby son, Sherry, just grown up <laughs> in one day. And now he's getting back I'm married to beautiful Laura. And part of, Laura now is part of our family. I'm very, very proud of her. I'm very happy with this wedding. At least I'm joining the Irish life from now. <laughs> <laughs> I speak a little bit Persian because I know all my uh, Iranian friends, they speak English perfectly well. But I like to just show my sensitive feeling to my language today. خانم آقایان خیلی ممنون متشکرم که تشریف آوردید از یک راه دور از قدم رنجه فرمودین شب ما رو زیباتر کردین خیلی متشکرم که این شب بسیار قشنگ رو برای ما به وجود آوردید ان شاء بهتون خوش بگذره این روزیه که هر مادری آرزوی دیدن چنین روزی رو داره و من خوشحالم که شادیم و با شما شریک باشم 
قرار نبود من صحبت کنم من از قلبم صحبت میکنم تو شعر یعنی آره یا از آرش از گوینگ تو آرش گوینگ تو از میگوین آفتر می I guess my part of the speech is a, a series of thank yous, uh, just a con- uh, well, on top of obviously what's been said, and I guess the first thank you should be to the lovely speeches from Kathy and Jill, and thank you very much, and uh, to Kira as well, and Mike. And the kids and all of Laura's family actually because since day one and they've made me feel very welcome in their family and I um, we have some funny stories I told about when me and Laura started dating and um, but whenever I've met them they've been very uh, welcoming and and uh, their Irish background very similar to our Iranian one they're very family orientated they're very warm very personable and I knew we would get on really well so Thank you for your lovely speeches, and it was certainly uh, enlight- insightful in terms of Laura's little... <laughs> <laughs> and to my own, obviously, lovely mother, thank you for your lovely speech. And for those of you obviously who don't speak Persian, she was just thanking, obviously, um, some of our guests who have come from, obviously, from Iran and from other parts of the UK and abroad to uh, join us on this special day. Um, I guess, and obviously a big thank you for making our day even more special is for all of you guys and who have uh, shared your free time and come from wider, from, you know, we have a very quite international audience here today. We have some lovely people and family from my new family from Ireland and we have some extended family from America who have come a long way, some of two planes and we have my lovely aunt and my God, some of my cousins from Switzerland and we have all my good friends from London and uh, my good friends all around there from X University and I see a lot of friendly faces across so thank you very much for coming. You all look beautiful tonight, thank you for making an effort and <laughs> congratulate yourself. <laughs> uh, the next part of the thank you is obviously to both our families, or I guess on behalf of Laura, myself and uh, getting married, for those of you who have, most of you in the room have had the pleasure of obviously going through it, know it's a tremendous big project and um, <laughs> I, I can't say I've been much used because I've been sort of distracted in other things like, during the first couple of months and Laura's done a fantastic job and she's worked very closely with Patrick and Kira, where are the guys here? Uh, they're, oh, they're not, they've disappeared, they're gone, but they've helped immensely with Laura and all the other supplies and hopefully you've all enjoyed the wonderful facilities they're put on tonight and the, the food and the hospitality of, of Ireland in general and I know those of you who were fortunate to share, we had a lovely dinner last night so thank you for coming and we do appreciate and I hope you've enjoyed the night so far and hopefully we'll enjoy, enjoy it further on as we continue. Um, I guess the, the next thank you is for the lovely bridesmaids, I think you all agree they look absolutely gorgeous and their dresses are fantastic. So. Ladies, thank you very much for your uh, wonderful efforts and your ad- all looks adorable and their little cute little outfit. <laughs> and the final thank you before I hand on to the, uh, the, I guess the more exciting part, which is my brother's best man speech, is to guess to thank the person who I guess today wouldn't be, we wouldn't actually be here and that's, hey sweetie, you're right. <laughs> it's okay, you can do it. You want to talk? <laughs> <laughs> And not that sweetie, the, the sweetie to is, um, is obviously to the, the lovely lady who I'm very proud to call my wife, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Laura and I have actually only been dating, well, uh, probably two years now, and I remember when we first started, um, Laura's mum is exactly right, Ka- uh, Kathy was, she doesn't do things by heart, and on our second date, she had just come to meet some of my friends. Those friends were her sister and a, a lovely Mike, her, her brother-in-law. Like, okay. <laughs> so that was, and then Laura actually sat through the whole meal and didn't say anything. So I think she was more nervous than I was, but uh, I thought she got through that. I think the third date was meeting her mother. So, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so I knew hopefully she likes me and I think we'll go on. But truly she's a, a wonderful person. She's very generous with her time, her 
she's very sensitive and she hopefully has, well, I, it's weird because when I uh, first started dating Laura, my good friends, I think they're at the back, Steve, Nick and Claire, who uh, I, I was working with at Merrill Lynch at the time, were sort of, they were sort of listening to my date stories and I was taking them, you know, how we got on and they were sort of giving me advice because they've obviously been through it and they've got lovely partners and wives who they've brought with them today, so thanks for coming guys. And, and I was telling them, I said, what do you think? Do you think this is a good, a good thing? And Claire specifically, where are you Claire? Yay! So Claire was very supportive and as was Steve and Nick and say, so, yes. And, and I think, I don't know if you, did, we, did you meet them? I think you met them early on in our relationship. So, yeah. <laughs> so they were very well. So they were, and, but generally speaking, I think we've had a wonderful two years and I look forward to spending many, many, many more years together. We've just bought a lovely house and things are moving in the right direction. So thank you, my darling. And I look forward to spending the next 50 plus years with you together. <laughs> On that note, uh, I would like to pass over to my best man, my older brother, and my tormentor, I believe, for the next five minutes. <laughs> You'll see me gradually sink to my uh, chair. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, Karen, I'll do your job, sorry. <laughs> Uh, if you would like to give a, a round of applause, please, for my brother and the best man, Mr. Aaron. Welcome. Hi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And for those of you who don't know me, my name is Arash, aka Ari, and I'm Sherwin's elder brother and best man. Firstly, I'd like to thank all family and friends who have travelled as far as the US. UK, <laughs> Germany, Middle East, and even as far as how's those things to make it today. I think everyone would agree on behalf of the bridesmaids. Um, they do absolutely look gorgeous. And I've, I've done an excellent job making today an emotional event. Look, even the cake is in tears. <laughs> but seriously, how difficult is it to... Come on, it's the first one. <laughs> tears. Go on, how difficult can it be to pounce, look pretty, and hold flowers for an hour? So, I think a round of applause for the bridesmaids, definitely. <laughs> Laura, I think everyone will agree with me to say today you look absolutely stunning. What a wonderful, caring, kind, and beautiful woman you are. And we do welcome you to the family, and I'm looking forward to having another sister-in-law. Thank you. <laughs> Now, for those of you who don't know my brother, <laughs> right, Chev was is a person who really was ambitious, hardworking, and he wanted to achieve. In his 20s, early 30s, he went from owning Porsches to Aston Martins and living in a luxury flat in Stanmore Hill. Since then, things have really gone up for him. He drives a 12-year-old Mini and lives in Stevenage. <laughs> However, with a woman in his life, he's now a proud owner of 26 luxury cushions, matching bath mats, towels, and a pair of oven gloves. <laughs> Laura, I did agree to not embarrass Chev tonight, so I will behave. But to prevent any further embarrassment, Chev, a mum was right in the church. I've got to say this, your flies have been undone since the start of the ceremony. <laughs> Okay, one quick story about Chev, and then we'll wrap this up, and then we'll hit the bar. 13 years ago, Chev and I, we used to go to the local gym. And after our workouts, we'd head to the showers, and then afterwards, for some jacuzzi action. On this specific weekend, the weather was very warm. The gym was busier than normal, so after my shower, I told Chev, I'll see him in the jacuzzi. When I got to the jacuzzi, it was very busy. There were a lot of nice ladies in there. And they looked like they just stepped off the Playboy magazine with their small bikinis and ample assets. So Chef comes out to join us, he hangs his towel, he turns around to approach the jacuzzi, sees the lady sitting there, and says over to us, hey guys, how's it going? He's breathing in, chest, puff, chest puffed out, stomach breathing in, then splash! Chef falls in head first into the jacuzzi. So, Soaking everyone in the process. Absolutely soaked. 
<laughs> the lifeguard across the pool was in stitches. He said, never had to rescue anyone from a jacuzzi before. <laughs> but Shem and Laura, if I have to give you some word of advice about a successful marriage, there's three key themes here. The three things, without a doubt, that makes a great marriage is a good sense of humour, patience, and Chev, selective hearing. <laughs> but joking aside, I want to take this moment to say what a privilege it is to be your best man. I can assure you that the whole family is proud of you, Chev. And we're thrilled to see you marrying a beautiful bride, Laura, today. Ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me immense pleasure to invite you all to stand once more, raise your glasses to a toast to Chev and Laura, to a lifetime of love and happiness, the bride and groom.